We're now moving on to the Children's Rights Award. This award is for the best broadcast, print or new media coverage that advances the rights and includes the perspectives of children worldwide. The Children's Rights Award is judged by a youth jury for young people selected through a national competition, all of whom are passionate about media and children's rights. And this year, the youth jurors were drawn from the universities participating in One World Media Student Programme from around the world, uh, or from around the UK. Um, I always think of students are fairly old youth, but um, that, that's, that's who they are. Last month, the youth jurors came to London to select the winner of this award, and let's see how they got on. I'm Laura Donaldson, I'm studying multimedia journalism. I'm Faisal Tahir, I'm studying journalism broadcast. My name is Nora Kala, I study international development and anthropology. My name is James Kiesel, I study BA TV and radio. We need um, knowledge about different cultures because we are living in the same world, yet our lives differ so very much. I really enjoyed looking at the entries for the category. There was so much variety and I thought the entries were really informative. There's no real easy way to sit down and watch these objectively. It's it's really difficult because they're quite emo it's quite an emotive subject. The judging, I've got to say, was really intense. Deciding which one should come first and which one, which two of them should like run up was really, really hard. The worst and minor disagreements, nothing too serious. We eventually got to an agreement, but going through that process was really interesting because I feel I learned even more about the entries and like appreciated them even more. The documentaries that I've been watching, that's what I want to do. When I was watching these documentaries, I felt so inspired. After studying, I would like to be a broadcaster, I think. And it definitely made me want to use what I want to do in my career, but to help these situations. I want to go across the world to a completely different country and just highlight problems there, but not just highlight and come back to my comfort zone, but help them out and really give something back. The boy Mir, 10 years in Afghanistan. <laughs> Child marriage, denying girls' rights, perpetuating poverty. This multimedia documentary offers complete and in-depth coverage of child marriage. It comprises videos, animation, photos, fact boxes and infographics to offer a better understanding of an issue that impacts 10 million girls under the age of 18 and challenges overall development. The site has been picked up by organisations and media outlets around the world and is used to raise the profile of an important issue that is rarely discussed in the West. Africa investigates spell of the albino. Mm, so where is the albino bomb? Where is it? I want to you said they've uh, crashed it in the medicine. So the albino bone is here. Now, is it is it a young albino or an old albino? A young albino. Like a, a child. That's it. It's time to scare him with my arm. Tell him I brought him a present. You should take this. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Say you want a life I'll be no arm. Take it. Take it. Take. Why? Why? What are you? Take it. Take the albino arm. Take it. Why are you afraid? He says what? 
He says what? Sorry. Sorry for what? Sorry for what? Is these things that you do that kill albinos? To present this prize, please welcome the One World Media Youth Jury itself. entries for the Children's Rights Award, but particularly our outstanding shortlist of three. The boy Mir, 10 years in Afghanistan, gave us a moving and revealing insight into life in Afghanistan, capturing 10 years of a boy's life with a 90-minute fil film. Child marriage denying girls' rights, perpetuating poverty, is a great interactive resource that takes a unique approach to presenting the little reported issue of child marriage and the issues surrounding it. Africa Invest Investigate, Spell of the Albino, was an excellent piece of investigative journalism examining a serious crime in Tanzania. It was often disturbing, but we thought it really made a difference and could potentially save lives. But there can only be one winner. And the winner is... Africa investigates Spell of the Albino. <laughs> It's a shame the presenter is not here tonight, um, Anas Aremi or Anas. But this, this film, Spell of the Albino, is just uh, one of the series of films that we have uh, made um, called Africa Investigates. Uh, I am proud to say that the idea that we managed to put together is to find African journalists, you know, people in the developing world, to try and get them to tell their own story. And um, this is something that we intend to do um, right across the world, and therefore I'm hoping that you broadcasters will help us. You know, when you hear that uh, a journalist has been kidnapped or killed, um, believe it or not, 10 out of 11 is got to be a Western journalist. But this real local uh, uh, um, journalist to actually tell the stories that we use as fixers, uh, they don't get any mention when things go wrong with them. And this was what we were trying to turn around. And thank God, Al Jazeera actually got it. And I want to thank Damot and Paul and the team at Al Jazeera, who actually managed to give us the opportunity to start commissioning, ensuring local journalists, because these people are important. These are the people that we go and we say fixers. But without these people, these important stories could not be made. And that's what we want to do. And I'm lucky uh, to work on this series with uh, you know, a quite a remarkable man, Claudio. And he has not only directed this film, but he's doing something now in Tanzania to help the albinos. And I'm proud to work with this man. Thank you very much. Yeah, I can only say that's actually, sorry has already mentioned it, it's the key 
that whole idea that you start working with local, local people, actually not necessarily exclusively journalists. For example, in this film, Spell of the Albino, I just suddenly realized one of the key figures which became the backbone of the whole film was a local albino fixer, Isaac, who originally was just kind of the translator. And then I suddenly realized because he, as an albino himself, obviously he spoke the language locally and he understood all the problems of these uh, albino kids who get attacked. It's just a crazy um, superstition that people believe that albino body parts bring you luck, particularly in mining companies, people think albino body parts will help them to find gold and diamonds. That's kind of underlying the reason why this madness goes on. So I'm pleased that this film touched uh, the nerves of many people, and I hope it will help expose the madness of witchcraft, not only in Tanzania, but in lots of other countries where it's rampant. It's unbelievable it's still going on in the 21st century, but it's a fact, it's, it's massive. And um, fortunately, I managed to stay in touch with uh, Isaac, our albino translator fixer, and he is in touch with the kids in, in the film, which appeared, and what we're trying to do is to set up a scholarship fund, because these children, they basically, they lose limbs, and without help, they would just end up as beggars in the street, and they are hunted more. So what we try to make sure that they will get the best possible education, because that's probably the only way to make sure they, they somehow can get, you know, can, can continue a, a decent life. So anybody who's interested to know more about it, please, please get in touch. And a big hand, please, for the youth jury. Yeah.